Hey what's up guys this is Bifrost here back again on this channel after a long time and today I'll be talking about Skyline Emulator Purple Edition a forked version of Skyline and Strato Emulator with brand new features let's start with the minimum requirements you need an Android 10 or above Android device it works on MediaTek processor Android devices as well but not the G series I guess it will also work on Snapdragon 450 processor or above. So those are the minimum requirements. 4 to 6 GB of RAM depending on the game which you want to play. If you try a small game like Sonic Mania then it should work even on 2 GB RAM Android device. I guess, I hope so. But anyways, no one is going to be emulating Switch games on a 2 GB RAM Android device. Let me tell you guys that Skyline Purple Edition is completely open source. With that being said, if you guys are new here, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notifications as I bring similar videos on my channel but not constant. Uh, anyways, let's get started through today's video. So guys, let's get started. As I mentioned previously that as this is a fork version of Skyline Emulator, Skyline Purple is also completely open source and is available on GitHub. You can find it on Mr. Purple Skyline repository and here you will see public repository forked from bylaws Skyline. And if we go ahead and scroll down, you will just find more information related to Skyline Emulator and its license etc. We'll head on over to the actions tab and this is the only legal way to get the Skyline Purple edition uh, you shouldn't trust any different sources skyland purple edition is only available on mr purple's official github page under the skyland repository now the latest build was fixed conflict in fps red crash so make sure you are logged into your github account and there we have the skyland purple edition latest build uh, so make sure to load it on your android device now i have already loaded it the setup procedure is just like skyland emulator you have to select the folder where you store your library of games including importing the files etc but once you are all done with this setup procedure, you will see Skyline Emulator written at the top left corner and this is in fact better than the Skyline Edge Emulator. So keep that in mind, it's more up to date. You will see some purple accents because as you know Skyline Purple Edition so it gotta have purple accents and if we just go ahead and scroll down, let me start off by telling you guys the best settings. Make sure to enable dock mode and disable this option if you want to play game like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Make sure to enable this option, doesn't really matter. Enable show performance statistics. Also go to aspect ratio, select the device aspect ratio here. Afterwards enable support foldable screens, this will help anyone who has an foldable android device. Uh, show pause button should be enabled, it's pretty cool feature. Disable audio output, uh, enable this option if you have a very low end android device. Now in terms of GPU driver configuration, select the driver which is best suited for your Android device. For example, for all the Android devices below Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 that is Snapdragon 888 processor or below, you should use Turnip drivers. And if you guys have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor or above, use the custom Vulkan drivers. This will improve your performance and some rendering capabilities. I have an OnePlus 11 with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor so I'll be using the Vulkan driver. And Turnip drivers are even better. So post triple buffering make sure to enable this option, enable disable frame throttling option if you have a really powerful android device or if you want to get 60 fps in any game which you want to play. Make sure to also set executor slot count scale to all the way according to the ram you have. Higher number of scale may perform better but will use more ram so that's the caution which you need to understand. Uh, I'll keep it at 12 because my device has 16 GB of RAM. Uh, if you have an low end device, keep it at 6 or 7. Anyways, executor plus threshold, you can keep it at 256. Uh, won't really matter much. After that, make sure to enable direct memory import. This setting will only work on devices with Adreno GPU. That means all the devices with Snapdragon processor will have this option, provide you better performance and stability in some games. Afterwards, make sure to enable post maximum GPU clocks if you have a flagship device, then enable free cache texture memory. Afterwards, scroll down, enable fast GPU read back and write. And those are going to be the best settings for Skyline Purple Edition. Now once you are all set, let me tell you guys that there are few features which is only available in Skyline Purple Edition. The first one is the search locations. Here you can select multiple folders where you store your games. For example, if you have categorized your games into like Mario games, Pokemon games, etc. If you have created multiple folders, you can select those locations in this specific setting. It's a feature of Strato Emulator. And if we just go ahead and enter any game, let me try out Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'll show you guys that. Uh, there will be an RAM usage at the top right corner, so this is also a feature of Strato Emulator. But there we go, our game has successfully started, we are getting around 80 FPS, pretty amazing, let's start the game and find out how well does 
Skyline Purple Edition actually work. Now if you have seen my top 5 best Nintendo Switch emulators for Android video then you know that I have ranked Skyline Purple Edition at the number 1 spot just for now because once Strato emulator is released Skyline Purple will no longer be on the number 1 spot but here you can see we are getting stable 30 FPS with no visible graphical issues. And let me try spawning a Pokemon. So we'll send out Arceus and let me show you guys that the entire texture of Arceus is being rendered properly, very minimal graphical issues and that's why it's fun to use this emulator. Now let's try out Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, as it's a newer title we'll find out how well does it actually work as well. So let me just go ahead and hold the game and import a save file. And there we go, save file was successfully imported, let's click on the play button. Now in Skyline emulator you can also customize the settings of the game accordingly. For example, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu requires some different settings like dock mode disabled and if the emulator crashes, it will make the FPS bar go red. So you don't waste your time waiting, just seeing a black screen which is pretty amazing feature. Your time will be saved with the help of this feature and there we go, Pokemon Scarlet running on our Android devices at again 20 to 30 FPS. There is a visible graphical issue right here but it's very minor, let's try battling this Pokemon and there isn't even any kind of uh, stuttering issues. While the shaders are being loaded like the Pokemon spawn effect etc. That's pretty optimized and hence you will always get better performance in Skyline emulator if you compare it to Yuzu Android. Comment down below if you guys face any kind of issues. Anyways that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notifications. Uh, see you guys next time. Goodbye.